All right, what we're looking at is a 1998 Harley Davidson Soft Tail Springer. Um, my 1995 Harley Davidson Bad Boy, which is really a blacked out Soft Tail Springer from Harley. It's been so popular that I bought this Springer to customize. I'm gonna sell this bike when I'm done customizing it. First things first, you guys, please stop trying to buy my Bad Boy from me. Everybody's trying to get my Bad Boy from me. I don't wanna sell it, I love the bike. I've had some crazy offers on the bike. and. Uh, so the reason I bought this was so somebody could have something really similar to that without actually having to have that bike. But, um, so you guys back off a little bit. Let me, let me have my stuff. But I got a nice low mileage 98 soft tail Springer. This bike was hitting the rear. It's got a bent rim. Somebody rear-ended them and it fell over. But it wasn't like a high speed drop, you know? So it dented the tank, bent the foot control, scratched the, the, the pipe. But, um, you know, it wasn't really, really a bad, a bad crash on the bike, everything's straight, the frame straight, it runs awesome. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower it, I'm gonna change the wheels, I'm gonna change the tires, I'm gonna fix some of the chrome. Uh, some of this chrome is oxidized, this bike came from near the beach in New Jersey, so some of the chrome is oxidized. Uh, change the foot controls, pipes, handlebars, a bunch of stuff, kind of the same kind of stuff I did on my bad boy. But I'm gonna transform this bike, I'm gonna lower it. You see how these bikes ride from the factory and they look absolutely horrible this way. I mean, I you know when you put a passenger on this, they squat, but they look absolutely horrible without being lowered, so I'm going to lower the front and back like I did on the bad boy. I'm going to slap this 98 Springer soft tail around a little bit here in the shop and uh, make it something special. First steps, strip everything off of it. I'm going to take the tanks off, seat. I'm going to leave the rear fender on. I got a set of um, matching paint. They're bad boy gas tanks, but they're matching paint to what's on the bike now. Um, so I'm going to put them on it because I love the original paint look on a bike like this and then kind of my own custom with everything else. So uh, I'm going to take the back wheel off. Um, so strip the pipes, tanks, seat, handlebars, foot controls, um, back, back wheel off a bit, and kind of get this thing start looking better once I get all the crap off of it. As I mentioned, this bike's from New Jersey. You see some of the corrosion it's got from the salt water hitting it. And naturally, that salt air and salt water hits the front of the bike the most when you're riding. Well, this front exhaust pipe bolt right here will not come off. I'm gonna try and get it off without breaking the stud off in the head, which is always a nightmare. So I have a couple different tricks I use. I'm gonna show you how I try and get this sucker out. Wish me luck. So here's how I'm trying to get this nut off. I got a small cutting wheel. <laughs> Grinding the one side of the nut off. I'm gonna go down to right before I hit the threads. Then I'm gonna try and knock it with a chisel and a punch and try and split that nut. It's gonna be real thin on the one side. Hopefully this force of me hitting it splits it and I can get the nut off without having to damage the threads. Then I can chase the threads with a die and fix them. But right now I'm just trying to get, remove as much material from the one side of that nut as possible. I seldom if I ever lose when it comes to this kind of thing. That thing was, uh, it was a real challenge. There's that stud, that nut that was the culprit. It wasn't really the nut that was the culprit, it was the rust that was the culprit. And the nut became the victim. But you see what I did? I came in with that angle grinder with that little cutting wheel. And I cut about, I don't know, a quarter of the material away on this one side and allowed me to hit it with a, with a punch and a chisel and split the nut and loosen it around and I was able to get in and knock it around with a, ch with a punch and uh, with a chisel. You can see how I tore the edges of it up. I tore that nut and that's wasted. But I got it out of there. The stud's still there. I can go to back with a threading die and chase the threads on that stud and that thing will be lived to fight another day. That nut's, that nut's uh, history. It's, it's life is done. Send it to the recycling bin. But anyhow, I got the pipes off this bike. I'm gonna keep on stripping, keep on working. When you put a performance camshaft in an Evo engine, 
you gotta upgrade that cam bearing which rides in that bore right there in the case. So I'm gonna show you how I do this. Cam bearing tool. So you knock the tool into the bearing. Then you gotta go ahead and put the shaft down the middle so the tool stays expanded in the bearing. Put the sleeve over, washer, big nut. Put a 5 8 wrench on the tool, inch and an eighth inch wrench on the puller. And the puller is just gonna pull the, pull the bearing right out. You can see that bearing starting to come out of the case now. It's not all the way out yet. I'll go ahead and finish pulling it out. I just wanted you to see how the puller pulls it out. There's my bearing at the end of the tool right there. The stock Harley Davidson bearing is on the right. The bearing I'm putting it on is on the left. The bearing on the right you can see has shorter rollers and there's not as many of them. So the bearing on the left is superior because there's a lot more bearings to support the load of the cam. With the high lift cam, high duration, fast ramp speed, opening and closing those valves, puts a lot more strain on the bearing. So you definitely have to do this upgrade. If not, this bearing will fail. All the metal from this bearing is going to go down to the bottom of your engine and ruin your day. I used a tool I machined years ago and a soft mallet to knock that new bearing back in there. So I've got the Andrews EV46 camshaft in there. I got it timed to the pinion shaft with the mark on the camshaft and timed to the breather gear with the mark on the camshaft. So I know that's all in there, right? This rear cam will be always have to check the swing on it, make sure it's not gonna hit the case where it swings around in there because um, it's a much higher load than what comes from the factory, but I've got clearance here, so everything's good. I'm gonna go ahead and put the cam cover on and check the end play on this thing. So you can see I'm moving that camshaft in and out there. That's called your camshaft end play. And there's a range that the Harley manual says it should be in. And I know without even putting a feeler gauge on it to measure it, that it's too loose. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it out and put a thicker shim in the back of the camshaft to uh, take that play up. Because it won't really hurt it to run it this way, but it's gonna make a hell of a lot of valve train noise. And I'll tighten it up so it doesn't make that kind of noise. And here's the camshaft. And here's the thrust washer that goes behind the camshaft. And then this right here is the camshaft shim. This cam shim me measures 0 0.050, which is 50 thousandths of an inch. So I'm gonna put a shim in it that measures 0 0.060, which is 60 thousandths of an inch. It'll take up 10 thousandths of play. and should really tighten up the camshaft end play or camshaft float in the engine case. All right, now we've got that camshaft end play within spec. I'm ready to start putting everything else back together. All right, I got the soft tail springer sitting way up too high. I'm gonna lower the rear suspension. And how that's done is by pivoting this swing arm up. So you can see right now, uh, the swing arm's pivoted down counterclockwise from this boomerang section of the frame. So here's the shock. There's one of the shocks is out. The other shock is still mounted up underneath the bike. That's it right there. But here's the shock that is out of the bike. And what you do is you put an extension in the back of the shock here, an adjustable extension, and that allows you to lengthen the shock and will pivot the swing arm up clockwise, which drops the rear end of the bike. So that's how the rear end of a soft tail is lowered. So I'm gonna go ahead, which is, when I put the lowering kit on the shocks, which extends the shocks, it'll pivot the swing arm up, up, up a little bit. And when, where it rides naturally, the swing arm is, this way you can see it hanging out behind the frame. Well, it'll actually be in forward from the frame. You won't be able to see it anymore, which raises my axle height relative to the bike and lowers the bike to the ground. Go ahead and get the other shock out of there, put the lowering kit on both shocks, reinstall them. Then I'll put the back wheel on it. You'll see how much lower it sits in the rear than it did when I started. Here's the stock shock. Once I put this link in the back, I can adjust it, which extends it, which makes the, the link longer or shorter if I want to raise it back up.
The torque value on that is real tight. <clears throat> on the top is the disassembled shock absorber with the original link on it. And on the bottom is the disassembled shock absorber with the adjustable link on it. So there's a pair of Harley-Davidson soft tail shocks with the lowering kit extensions on there. These are adjustable, so I can adjust the ride height. There's the original links that I took out of the bike. There's everything installed. I'm gonna take it over to the bike, install it, drop the rear end, put the back wheel on, and move to the front. I always paint the shaft of the stud with a little bit of graphite, just so it pivots smooth in there. And hang, hang the front first, get it started. I got this right side shock and I'm just tightening it up now. I have it kind of where I think I want it um, as far as how low the bike's gonna ride, but once I get the tire on it and weight the bike down and um, you know hit the preload on these shocks, we'll get a real good sense of ride height and I can adjust it up and down from there. I took that bent spoke wheel off the back of it. Got a hard thing, some fat boy solid wheel on the back of this thing. Um, new Dunlop tire. I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing matted up in here, get the brake caliper on it. Um, the old brake caliper was leaking, so I gotta get, use Harley Davidson caliper. I'm gonna get that on with some new pads, bleed it all out, get the forward control on it. I can move toward the front, lower that springer, put that 23 inch front wheel on it. You can see how much I lowered this bike. You can, See this edge of the tire below the fender brace. I got to lower it down pretty good. I can go a little further with it. I just might. Exhaust pipes. I'm not real crazy about straight one and three quarters drag pipes for a bike like this, but I have a customer that's offered to buy it. I don't have a deposit yet, but he says he wants it and he wanted drag pipes. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these on it. Um, you know, I'll get it running, see how it looks, ride it, and if our deal goes through, I'll leave them on. And if it doesn't, I'll probably take these off and put something else on it. I went ahead and dressed those threads on that front exhaust port stud just because if you remember I had to cut that nut off and I don't want to, to deal with that drama again. So I went ahead and lubricated these real good and cleaned them up with a threading die. Now I'm ready to put the front pipe on. Exhaust pipe's on, I got all the valves adjusted, all the engine work is done. I'm gonna go ahead and put the other gas tank on it and get the seat on it and get it running, make sure everything's right with it before I, uh, I change the handlebars. And I'm gonna go ahead and change the handlebars, remove the turn signals, do a bunch of stuff up front. I'm gonna go ahead and get the tanks on it just because I like to see the way the wires come out from between the tanks. I have to tuck all these wires back in. You know, there's gonna be a little extra wiring, so I have to tuck all this stuff back in. And I like to have the tanks on when I do that just so I can get a good feel for how it's gonna look. I got the gas tanks on the soft tail, put some fuel in it, hooked everything back up. I'm gonna go ahead and run it before I pull the handlebar controls off because sometimes you know all the cables for the starter and the switches and everything are on the handlebars. So I wanna make sure it works before I take that apart in case something that I do when I take it apart causes an electrical problem. compression and 10 to 1 compression so big difference sounds different when it idles straight pipes make it louder of course but it's gonna run a lot stronger um, pretty still get this finished and take it for a ride I've got the Lapera bare bones diamond stitch solo seat for the soft tail in my opinion best thing in solo seat you can put on a soft tail 
I mean, the other seat I had was a two-up seat, but um, I usually just stick on pads for that. But this is a really great looking seat. This seat probably gets you the closest to the ground you can get. Plus, just a really great sleek look for a bike like this. And it works on my bad boy, it'll work on this. So these stock buckhorn handlebars definitely got to go. They just kill the lines of this bike. I've got the low rise drag bars on my bad boy. That's what I'm gonna put on this. I got a chrome set for this. Almost, it's, it's a kind of a, the bars are kind of a hybrid between straight drag bars and a speedster bar or, or a speedway hit racing handlebar. But I'm probably gonna pull the blinkers off this thing. But either way, I'm gonna change the bars, change the grips. I'm not sure yet. I know you guys leave some comments about what you think about the 21 inch versus 23 inch front wheel. I know a lot of people weren't into it on the bad boy. I bought one for this bike. I'm probably going to put it on it. You know, you just pop one off and pop the other one back on. It's, you know, something you can do in just a few minutes, less than an hour's time. But, you know, the bike's lowered. It's um, got different pipes on it, different seat on it. It's starting to take on a different look. And, uh, the engine work it is going to make it really fun to ride. I got the fat boy tanks on it that match the soft tail custom paint. So I'm going to go ahead and get these bars changed and I'll probably ride this thing home today before I change the wheel in the morning. These are my bars of choice. They're MCM low rise drag bars. Like I said, it's kind of like a flat track bar, speedster bar, whatever you want to call it. Um, but almost flat, so really similar to a drag bar, but just gives you a really great feel on a bike like this with this seat. When I ride my, when I ride my bad boy, I mean, I can't even tell you how good it feels to ride that bike. It's just such a great fit for me. Um, just to fit from the seat to the handlebars and from the seat to the foot controls with these controls I have on this bike. Just a really great setup and it looks mean. Uh, you know, when you're going down the road, I mean, the thing just looks like it's built for speed, built to race, you know, it's. Everything Harley put on it from the factory, the exhaust pipes, the seat, the handlebars really killed the styling of the bike. But it's real simple. You just change just a few little things and you get a bike that looks great. Just changing these bars cleans the look of this bike up so much. I'm going to go ahead and get these hand controls on here. And uh, get everything fit so that it's comfortable to rise and the clutch lever and brake lever are at the right angle. The Avon grips, super comfortable. I love these grips. I usually ride with gloves, but if you don't ride with gloves, hard to beat the fit of those Avon contour grips. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I run these handlebar control wires through the handlebars. I did it on the bad boy. I didn't really show you how I did it. I just kind of did it and told you that I did it. So. And this one, I'm going to show you how I do it. I already had the hand controls on and marked where I wanted the holes to go for the wires. So I went and marked that hole. I use the center drill because the regular drill is going to want to walk all over the radius surface of the handlebars. So I go ahead and use the center drill to start my holes. It gives me a nice V cut there where I can take a regular drill bit and drill into the handlebars. So I drill on each side where the wires are going to go through. And in the center of the handlebars where both wires are going to come out and run down to the wiring harness between the gas tanks. I need a much bigger hole than this for the wires to go through the bars, but I start with a quarter inch drill bit and then work my way up to a bigger bit. So I make one hole in the end of each handlebar where the wires go in. I'm gonna put two holes in the center where they're gonna come out because I have twice the wires coming out, so I need twice the hole diameter. So I make two holes in the end of hitting with a porting bit and making an oval hole in the middle. Okay, so let's take a look. Here's my hand control. Now this wiring harness that runs from the hand control right here, runs back down between the fuel tanks and runs into this Deutsch plug right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this Deutsch plug. And obviously, this plug won't fit through this small hole that I drilled through the handlebars. So what I have to do is take a scribe and I'll push back the retaining pins that hold these wires in. And I'll show you how I do that. But I'll push back the retaining pins that hold these wires in. Wires in. I'll pull the wires out of the plug. I'll run them through the handlebars, reinsert them in the Deutsch plug, and reconnect the Deutsch plug. Everything's as good as new. Nobody ever knew what happened, except it looks a lot better. The plug for the other side is way back here. It's all those yellow and blue wires. So I'll pull this tank out and pull that plug off as well. I'll do the same thing on the other side of the bike. 
So I gotta pull these wires out of this Deutsch plug to fit this whole wiring harness through the handlebars and reconnect the Deutsch plug to the motorcycle between the tanks. So what I do is I make myself a little key. I can go to the, the Harley manual and look at the schematic and pull the wires, but it's so much easier to do it this way. I just draw a diagram looking at the back of the plug and write which wires go in which place. I'll remove them and then I can put them back in knowing this is exactly the way this came off this motorcycle. Pulling the Deutsch plug apart isn't as difficult as you would think it is. Just go ahead and pull the retainer out. And I know it's gonna be hard for you to see down inside here, but I use a small scribe. And there's a little plastic retainers that, ho that hold the, all the wires in. You just pull the retainers out and the wires will pull through. So there's the whole gang of wires. I can't fit this square rubber grommet through the handlebar, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off, but you can see the wires are in. That's why I made my diagram. I can put it back in the grommet the way it needs to go. And I can go ahead and put everything back to the grommet the way it came out, put the grommet back into the plug, put the plug back in the bike, and everybody's happy. Let's go ahead and shove my gang of wires from this harness through the handlebar and fish it through and I've deburred the edge of this uh, hole so I made a pretty good sized hole in the middle of the bars. I just work this harness through, use my scribe to kind of pull the wires up through my center hole. It's pretty hard to do this without a set of scribes but you see it's got this little L shaped scribe here. Pull my wires up. There's three of the six, four of six, and five of six, and six of six. And there's all my wires. So there's the left side handlebar. Controls fish through. And this is the left turn signal, the horn, the high low beam switch. That's what all these wires go to. And I'll go ahead and do the same thing on the right hand side and reconnect them to the plugs. Before I go do everything, I always just double check. So I've got orange, white, yellow, blue on the right bank. And on the left bank, I have yellow with black, white with purple, and white. So now I just go ahead and put the plug back together. And this is done. It's real easy to pop these back in the plug. I'll show you how I do that real quick. So remember from my diagram, the plug clip is on the top. So I make sure my colors, they go into that plug clip, are there. And then I just... You want to kind of get all the wires to be the same length through the grommet. I feed the wires into each corresponding bank. If you've never done this before, it's kind of intimidating, but I've been doing it for years, so it's old hat to me. You want to push all the wires up so that they come up to the face of the plug. So they all need to be up to the face. And this retainer clip keeps them sprung in there so they can't pop out. And you just push the, the grommet back in the back of the plug. And boom, you've got the wiring harness run through the handlebar. It's all reassembled. You can see it only takes a matter of minutes really to do this. It's drilling the holes and the bars and fishing everything through and pulling the tanks takes all the time. This is actually the easy part, but it's the part that intimidates most people. Here goes the six wires for the brake side. Same thing as I did on the other side, just feed them through, get them to the middle, and then pull them out with a, with a scribe if I need to. There's my six wires on the other side. I'll go ahead and put this Start on the right bank, orange and white goes in the top. Uh, red with a yellow stripe goes below it. The gray is at the bottom of the right bank, right there. And the left bank at the bottom have white with a black stripe. Above that, I have white with an orange stripe. And the last wire is the black with the purple stripe. 
might be red. I don't know, I can't see the lights really well in here. This morning, it's super early. I like to do stuff like this early in the morning when there's nobody around, nobody to distract me, because it's easy to make a mistake. You need to go back and redo everything. I'm gonna pop everything back into the plug once again. The orange and the white stripe is gonna go from my drawing on the, this bank right here with the plug. All six female Deutsch plug ends are up at the top there. Go ahead and pop the retainer back in. Push the grommet in through the back. That's simple. Really cleans up the handlebars, especially if you have longer bars, ape hangers or buck horns or anything. These are super short, but the longer the bars, um, the more you notice the wires, so this cleans them up really, really nice. I go ahead and get the switch housing up on the handlebars for the throttle side. And you can see now the wires are through the bars. You can't see it at all. It goes in up under here. Uh, normally there'd be a dimple in the handlebar and it would just be tie wrapped to the outside of the bar, clipped to the outside of the bar. Then I go ahead and bring the handlebar master cylinder up. The handlebar master cylinder clips in to the switch housing. So you have to kind of merge those two together. Then I'll go ahead and tighten this down. This side's done. And I can move to the clutch side. I can tuck the wires in. Reconnect the Deutsch plugs between the tanks and put the tanks back on. And not much left to do on this bike except lower the front end and change the front wheel. Uh, again, I want to hear your comments about whether or not I should change the front wheel on this one. I'm thinking about leaving the 21 on it. We'll have to see what I'm going to do with that. But I'd love to hear your comments below. As you've seen, I'm definitely reading your comments and responding to them. This is the right side with the wires run through the handlebars. Super clean look. Um, doesn't get much better than that. Bike's gonna look awesome with these handlebars. The handlebars, the seat, lowering it just changes the whole way this bike looks. You'll see when it's all done. Same thing, just repeat the steps from the other side to this side. Go ahead and slide this control housing over the handlebar. Feed the wires through. The last bit of business over here is it puts the clutch lever on. I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect this Deutsch plug. Whenever I do something like this, I always wanna check and make sure I didn't pinch a wire, so make sure my starter button works. And my brake light switch works. Reconnect my Deutsch plug on the other side and do the same thing. Make sure my high-low beam switch works. 